something going if they want a reverse sweep. But I'm off to the green room, boys. You guys take this one away. I'm going to be relaxing and watching the action from the sofa. Indeed you are, and there couldn't be a better place to watch it from with two fantastic casters, I would imagine. At least that's your thought prospects, Mac. I wouldn't personally pump myself up that much. I'm not that overinflated of an ego. Either way, Invictus Gaming and VG here, Pilski, and a matchup that we do like to take a look at. It's always good to keep an eye on what's happening inside the domestic Chinese scene, and Invictus have really been knocking on the door of VG, but they haven't really bashed it down just yet. Oh, well, they bashed down Squeaky Door, and they're actually going to go for a bit of an upper's hit, but first, Ormond sneaking into Annex through the smoke. Actually, there's one Invictus player hiding there, but all of the entries going the way of VG. That upper side has just been demolished. Oh, you've been talking quite a lot about this map and how it's sort of a bit T-sided, CT side, a bit of a weird one. And I think maybe that's what we're going to get to see from Vici today, particularly with a good pistol round start on the T-side. They can really get that ball rolling, even though the group think would say that the map is CT-sided. Uh, look, if you are a proficient nuke team, you can make nuke a T-sided map. I 100% believe that. It's just all about how you can push and pull those rotations and how you know how to hit those crisp, crisp timings. And that's one of them on the pistol round there from Beachy Gaming. You can just see the nuance, nuance to that strat. They blew open the squeaky door as if they were going for a bit of a vent drop. They just wait a little bit longer for Ormond to slide into Annex real smooth like. And then all of the kills Invictus just fall like a bunch of dominoes. Indeed, so King often sharp on the entries here, and that is a very, very good sign for Vici Gaming. Kaze helping him out as well. Look, if Zoking and Kaze on the T side are getting the ball rolling the first couple of players into the bomb site. It mm. makes life so much easier. Remember that Mirage map that we yep. watched? And that kind of just reminds me a little bit of it. I wish I could play some of those rounds in front of Vici and just be like, do this. <laughs> because I reckon that's when Vici is at their best on that T side. Funny, it was so easy. Yeah. Back to the Galil for Ormond and Jam Young. Well, Ormond's got himself an AK, but we did talk about Ormond earlier today with the Galil. He's pretty sharp with it. Jam Young should be able to get a little bit done as well. This is a bit more of a reserve T round from Vici. They're quite prepared to wait for Invictus to push into them. They're not taking any chances. They know that the second round force is uh, pretty much commonplace on Nuke in particular. A lot of close angles, you can get some damage done with those Deagles. You see that Deagle shots ringing out, hitting Kaze a couple times in the back of Lobby and after waiting. For quite a while, VG feel like they've waited long enough, starting to make wow, some moves damage. out. Look at all that damage, mostly from Utility, actually. A great, lot of great Molotovs here. Yeah, Destroyer forced away by that one as well. This is working perfectly for Vici at the moment. It's really important that you don't drop this round. I mean, it's less so, I guess, important on the T side, because if you do get into that force by Madness, you can normally still scrounge together a good buy, but always nice to start off with a pistol and then ensure that you get past this dangerous force by round, which Time and time and time again here in Asia and even in ANZ, we've seen these kinds of rounds slip away. See how Saga does get a good one onto Jam Young. Yeah, it's four on three, but Viva and Roy very, very low. Xiao quite low as well. And I dare say Invictus will be struggling to win the round from here. Time's ticked away a little bit too much. Yeah, maybe I, they I don't think they're trying to win. They're just trying to like threaten Vici and keep them in this lower bomb site. Yeah, it doesn't seem to have worked out too well. Orman does a good job of dealing with Xiao and he just hides oh! open up the ladder. Perhaps a mistake. Perhaps he wanted to go for the frag. Not sure. Either way, Be gets careful, away with it. Orman. Come on, mate. Oh. You definitely don't want to lose the AK right now. No, and you don't want to hand it over to one of the CTs. Either way. Do have two deagles and armor being saved over by Invictus. Could do a little bit more damage. That's a great pistol, followed up by a beautiful anti force buy. That's going to get Vici right in the driver's seat. Up 2 0, looking to shut down yet another anti eco round and uh, cruise along to that beautiful 3 0 start on that T side. And every time they get through on this T side, it forces Invictus to have a bit more depth to their own T side, which on a shaky map for yourselves. Uh, definitely puts your uh, couple puts you in a bit of a difficult spot. Yeah, that's not going well for Jam Young, but Kaze does manage to get the trade with a molly that was thrown in. Very standard round again from VG. Obviously sped up quite a little bit, but they're just throwing that molly into the Z connector, rushing down the ramp, and they're able to get into B. 
really uncontested. They look really switched on today. Is that just me? Like, oh, it I just agree. seems like they're, they're flowing through the map with so much confidence. But, you know, the difference is they're playing against a team that's not called Tai Lu. So we really have to see what they're going to do when they play against the big bad Tai Lu because that's where VG tends to crumble. That's where they fall apart. Well, you know, you can have all the confidence you want against Tai Lu, uh, but a lot of the times you flow through the map into a hail of bullets. And then that's when, you know, uh, after a couple of times things don't go your way, you start to question yourself. I get the feeling, though, that Vici has this mental block against Tai They Lu. definitely do. It's undeniable at this point. Certainly not there for this match against Invictus. Four on three. I mean, Invictus keep a couple of guns alive. Some armor there for Oi. They've saved quite a lot, actually, in those last rounds, even though they've lost the last couple. So the money on the CT side is looking pretty good here. They should get a pretty nice buy. Question is, will they go into the AWP? Viva certainly is thinking about it at the moment. Right. South Sage, he keeps playing this org. I swear to God, if this man goes to a position where you need a couple of flashes, I'm going to be a little bit upset -y. And he's going towards outside. I mean, maybe if he plays from Annex, that's going to be a bit of a different story. But he's actually going in towards Secret. And he just gets kicked <laughs> trying to cross over there. That's interesting. Ormond is uh, going to delete Destroyer. And that's the round over, really, isn't it? That's just not how you want your first gun round to go on Nuke CT side I mean, at you all. As, you might as well not even call that a gun round because it's like it's not a round anymore. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Viva does get one back onto Advent, so maybe Vichy are going to have to work a little harder to get through this one. But look at the positioning there for Ormond. He's gotten already past Hell. He's in Zed Connector. Soaking's down on the B bomb site. The map control here for Vichy is unbelievable. I think Ormond's like very switched on on this map, right? Like he he goes for these very very good moves where it, it feels like he knows exactly what's happening. You don't see it oh. as much on some other other oh. maps. How does, How does he win he, that? He has to get away with that. Exactly right. F against flying of all players. Flying's the last person you expect to be connecting a 90 and 4 there. Oh, they're just going to molly off heaven, but it's not really necessary when he hits the headshot onto Oi like that. And you're right. Vici is definitely looking pretty switched on at the moment. I feel like a lot of the time you'll maybe see Orman go for something like that. Maybe not necessarily on Nuke, but on any map just in general. He'll try to get aggressive somewhere and he'll just run into his opponent and die. This time he gets the timing right. Just... Sticks around in Dead Connector and admittedly probably should have dropped to flying. But even still, just the position holding it down, locking it down for that long gave so much room for Vici to move. I'm really not liking how Invictus is playing at the moment. It feels like they're sort of just waiting around in individual spots and they're letting Vici do whatever they want to them. That's not the Invictus gaming that I know and love that's playing a really sick game of Counter-Strike. Invictus is at their best when they're taking the initiative, like you saw on that T side of Vertigo, when Fly is getting aggressive and taking the fight to Vici. And that's where Vici really start to have some struggles from time to time. That's how Tyloo gets them every time. And that's what Invictus needs to embrace if they want to try to make something happen here, because they're getting pummeled at the moment. Deagle's in hand for Invictus. And in the past, we have spoken quite positively about their Deagling. There is another example of it. South Saga does get soaking. So this time the first opener goes to Invictus. It's a bit of a change up that Vici haven't had to deal with at all on Nuke. He was on his own in ramp room though. So just the one player. How much damage can he really do? All right. We'll see. Going to have a lot of players heading his way pretty soon. One shot here. He's going to go for a bit of a repeat after that initial oh. flash. That is a nice connection there. Well, it's good news that he's done it. It's down to three now for Vici, and the round slowly starts to slip away from them. They've gotten control of ramp, but surely that signifies their intention to go down to the B bomb site. Invictus wisely have rotated a couple of players over there. Avicii have a lot of thinking to do and a lot of control still to gain. If they're going to go to the A bomb site with 40 seconds on the clock, things can really just fall by the wayside here. A couple of mistakes, a couple of good shots from Invictus, and this round is going to be over. Flying has gotten Kaze, Orman, two on the entry, and that's a job well done, but Flying is wrapping behind, and Advent will not be prepared for that. I dare say that is now the round. Invictus are going to get away with a freebie here, and Vici, for all the hard work that they've done, that's good for Invictus. That's definitely going to help them get their confidence going. Messy spray for Ullman does clean it up, but with 10 seconds and a bomb to retrieve, Ullman is going nowhere fast in this round. Ooh. 
like I said, good for Invictus's confidence to get that pistol armor win on the board, but that's not something you can replicate. That's not something that's consistent for Invictus. They need to make these gun rounds look much more convincing. That's Phil. How's he got away with that? Alright. This is double AWP actually for Invictus. So keen to see how they're going to put that to use. Seems like Destroyer over towards ladder base. Viva up on the box. Bit of an off angle towards ramp. But uh, Vichy going for this upper's exit. Sasake and Flying playing quite close together. Oi on the site. So they've got a pretty good setup for this, Jordan. Now, Smoke going down on Squeaky Door. He's going to put a bit of a spanner in the works. Actually, Vichy just calls to go for it right now. Yeah, the flashes are good. Flying copping quite a lot. He's completely blind that whole time. But he gets away oh. with his life. That's a huge spray down from Flying. He's eventually traded by Kaze. That's worked out about as good as Vici could have realistically hoped with the setup that Invictus did have. I think they were like five on three and then flying happened. And that's not the first time this series that has been the case. Vici going to try and mix things up. They're going up against the double orb. So they're going to try and get a little bit tricky and wrap through that elbow area now. Bomb is stuck on the A bomb site though. So Vici do have to commit to that. I don't know if Invictus are aware of it. It seems like they probably should be. Mm. Destroyers in rafter. Viva's wrap back towards secret. I think they've got a pretty good setup here. Destroyer, he seems posted on that heaven position. And Viva's got Annex. Well, Orman's going to have to be the difference maker for Vici. Destroyer is watching the angle. Kaze creeps on up as well. But yeah, Destroyer's not putting his full attention up to heaven. And that is going to be his undoing. Orman having such a great map again. I really don't know what he has been eating for breakfast when it comes to DreamHack Open Summer, but it's a completely revitalized Orman. Normally you see this kind of a map once in a tournament, but we're now starting to see it on a more consistent basis, and that's a scary feature. Absolutely right. Flying does a lot of the heavy lifting there, but uh, up against the double ult, Vici get that one done. That's going to be expensive for Invictus, who do force into this one. A couple of their players lacking a little bit of cash. Have to go down to those MP9s. Or MP9 and the Deagle and a Famous, no util. Wall of Smoke out for Vici. Actually get past that Molotov relatively safely and commit down secret while Ullman hops on top of Annex going for that Lurk. Oh, he's still on the silo for now, actually. Something new from Vici as well. They haven't done this at all on the T side just yet, so Victor's have to figure out how to deal with that. Smoke into control room window for Viva. It does slow down the approach of Vici. Ah, he's completely surrounded. Now Invictus, three of them coming towards Megaton. An excellent shot from Viva to start things off. That's going to put pause for thought in Vici's mind. And actually, so no. many CTs down here. They're losing picks to the Deagle here, Jordan. Not the Deagles again. Jam Young, he has to take matters into his own hands. He's charged out into the bomb site. Advent behind him, but it's just gone horribly wrong for Vici. They don't seem to be able to get over the line against these weaker buys. They're on the precipice of breaking the CT economy twice now in the half. Ooh. Let's not count Allman out of this one out just yet. Starting to work his way through windows. Oh, he's spotted him out. This is a weird off angle for Destroyer, but if he misses the shot on that line, he might just die here. That's yes. exactly what happens. Oh, dearie me. South Saga low on HP, but close on the angle, and Allman wasn't expecting it. And Victors do get away with another cheeky one. Their money's not that good. So, Vici... On the T side, should be able to continue to force in. Yeah, look, they're going to have to go down to like one pistol armor, but I think if Vici has a good read on the money, it's probably worth the investment here. They could break the CP money right here and put themselves very, very far ahead. They're up five and two for now. If they win this round, which they do force into, it's actually five rifles. They go a little bit lighter on the utility. They're going straight towards door, straight through the Molotov, actually. Down and flying, you're going to farm that one up. This hasn't worked at all for Vici. Finally, a solid looking gun round for there's, Invictus. There's no flashes there. Like, Vici is known for a team, to, for being a team that's very, very tactically adept, right? But that was very much just Rush five players running outdoor with no nuance to it. 
no flashbangs, no anything, and they just got farmed yep. by a closed door setup. I mean, in the blink of an eye, we've gone from 1-5 with Invictus teetering on the precipice of being economy broken to now 3-5, where they're starting to get the CT economy rolling a little bit and a real opportunity to come back in the half. Beachy have to take an eco. Yeah. That's just one of those boneheaded plays that Vici makes every now and again that just leaves you scratching your head a little bit. Cause just when you're you, hyping them up. Yeah, you look at you look at some of those executes on the T side of Vertigo with all the little bits and pieces in the right spots, and you're like, wow, that was really sick. And then you just see them five rush door with not a single flashbang in sight and just get absolutely mopped on an important round like that where they could have reset Evictus Gaming's economy. Like, if they won this round, they would be up 6-2 CTs would be broke, and they're looking to put seven, if not eight, on the board when they verse a weaker buy of the, those CTs. They're going to have less utility. But now they're letting Invictus back into the half a little bit. Indeed. So we do have a little technical pause here, waiting for something to get sorted out, although you hear the chat going off. So hopefully that's good news, and it seems like it is. Just one flash here for Kaze in the round. Not sure that we're going to be seeing too much from Vici, which is really unfortunate because they just just had that opportunity to really turn this into something pretty astronomical. This first half could have really run away, but now it's anyone's game again. Now Invictus will have a lot of work to do to get this back to a respectable total on the CT side, but even still, it's better than what it could have been. Orman very quick down into B, though, and might even just get a bomb plan. Uh, Zell Saga is already down there. Doesn't let him. Oh, yeah. Good rotations from Invictus. Now they've got bomb control. Good cleanup. Wow. Uh, this is just... Uh, Turn on its head, hasn't it? It really has. And it didn't need to. Like, Vici's already up a map. They could have just shut Invictus out of this game and maybe even out of this series when you get that far ahead on the T side. But... Yeah. Now we're very much to this situation where it's much more evenly distributed. Invictus has their money control now, 4 to 6k across the board on that CT side. And Vici just has to go round to round. A very different looking game than we had a couple of rounds ago. And turn around pretty quickly, but not if it's going to go this way, though. Kaze's found himself a double destroyer, not hitting any shots with the orb. Beaver struggling as well. It's up to Xiao again, and it's the org that makes the difference. A big double spray down. Again, a good rotation, a good adjustment as well. Puts this back in at least some semblance of control for Invictus. Not really so much anymore, but two on two is much better, much more favorable. Well, Vici did some magic in the two on two last time around, but that was up against a double orb setup. Bomb going down on the site for Ormond. Covered off by Zoking. Flying, lurking around near Decon while Oi flanks to Megaton. Can Vici get off the site into better post plants? It seems like Zoking going to play from the site there while Ormond plays a bit of an off angle from the ramp. This is a great setup for Vici in this post plant. Flying's got his work cut out for him. That's a nice clean up. Six for Vici. Now you're looking at uh, Invictus. Still plenty of cash in the bank. Going to continue buying up. It's going to take a little bit more from Vici to grind them down. But that's a good start. Big old spray from Xiao. He's looked good with that org. 11 and 6. He questioned why he was buying it. He seems very comfortable with the weapon. Ah, it's worked out much better this time around. And I don't have a problem with him buying it. I have a problem with him foregoing utility for it when they are on the low economy. That's when I have a problem with him buying an org. But if their money's good, go for your life, mate. Straight down the vent really doesn't yeah, work yeah. out for them. Every time they try and force things through door, it's just not going well, is it, Jordan? Nope. I've at least gotten down to the B bomb site. It looks like they'll be able to get a bomb plant here. It's Advent's Duty, 14 HP. Lucky he didn't drop in that as well. And this is still a winnable scenario for Vici, but they don't have a whole lot of utility. Kaze's hanging onto a molly. This will be pretty critical. Oh, man, if he would have got that kill. 
could have turned things back on its head, but now it's three on four. Flying and Xiao are quite low on HP. So soaking in Kaze, it'll have to do something pretty special. Kaze might have made it a little bit of noise. Xiao has closed the door. Right, that's a free kill for Kaze. That's a good start. Soaking's also got one more. And now this is where the crossfire comes into effect with Invictus lacking time. Molly can get thrown on top of the bomb. That's Kaze's duty. But oh, he's absolutely cooked it. The door, the defuse isn't no going to get there in time anyway. What an absolutely crazy round. But Vici comes away with the win. And it's costly for Invictus. They're down to an eco again. Madness. Oh, my watch. I don't know what to say <laughs> about that. That was a two on five, man. And Invictus, that was the most panicked five on two I've seen in quite a long time. And that costs them. They're going to be on a save here on this CT side now. And Vici, after a couple of boneheaded plays, a little bit of a slip up. Even that last round definitely looked dicey, forcing things down the vent there. Losing almost two players. They somehow dragged that back from a two on five and get the win across the board. Now cleaning up this anti-eco. I guess we're back to square one, aren't we? Beachy have finally wrangled control of the economy back. It could have happened a little bit earlier. We could have seen... Never mind, hang on. seal has got himself a double kill with the Deagle. Smokes off the bomb as well. Oh, expectations subverted once again in Chinese CS. Oh, the Molly's going to clean him up, I think. Oh, okay. Sneaky. Going to get back towards the back of the door. Sneak back around from outside. The long spray from Zoking whips it back around. It's good that he gets that one under control because the fact that he does at least manages to salvage the round for Vici. If he doesn't, if he goes down there for free, it's all just falling apart. But okay, Vici have gotten through it fine. It doesn't really matter too much how many guns they lose there on the T side, although it is going to hamper the buy perhaps a little bit later on in the piece. All right, this is one of the egregious situations I'm talking about. So Zao Sage has gone for the org when Destroyer could have just bought M4 armor or M4 light armor, dropped him that, and he could have had an orb in return. But uh, like... Just grab that all. I feel like that's a bit of a stronger buy. Now Destroyer, somewhat of a liability with that Famous. A nice grenade. Again, just a little bit more of a default setup from Vici. They're not too over eager to push in just yet. Slow things down. Wait out some of the utility. And that's not too bad in a round like this when utility already was lacking to begin with. Yeah, a bit of a slower approach from Vici. They've got a good read on what Invictus has got access to. Now starting to move towards outside. Potential late round smoke wall from them. Out of flies. Molotov into secret. Slow them down a little bit. Vici's not in a rush though. They are very much wolf packing it. All five of them sticking together. Rushing down secret now. Where's the rotations from the CT side? There's no one on this lower site. Only now starting to move to Megaton Viva. Scrambling to get onto the site. But he really doesn't have a whole lot of help. Invictus doesn't have very much information, really. A weird off angle for Viva to play from. But it might just catch Vici off guard. He's got the crossfire oh. at Megaton. And Zo King dives through the smoke. This is not looking too crash hot. He needs to win that aim tool. Kaze might have just disconnected. I'm not sure what's going on there. But the bomb plan's gone down, at the very least, for Vici. And can Orman salvage it? One on four. He's gotten Xiao first. Bomb is not at all planted for him. If Invectus was already on the defuse, they would have got it. But now, Molly in hand. He's going to line this one up from... 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 No, never mind. He's not. It's too late. Uh... That was a bit of a mess. I think something's gone wrong for Vici there. I think someone might have disconnected and there was a bit of chaos going on. So we'll see. We get a technical pause here on not. We do. And yeah, I think that's just an unfortunate situation for Vici Gaming, which kind of sucks because again, they were in that position to really run away with the half. And now we're sort of reset again. Yeah. At the same time though, like if you look at that for what it was, you pause, like freeze frame that right before any action happens. You've got what for Invictus? You've got, v you got Viva dancing around the site, kind of out in the open. And one player at Megaton. Invictus, very, very late on the rotates. And Vici has got control of Decon and Windows. 
There's no way Viva should be getting away with that, you know? Like, it's just one of those situations where the T's have full control of all the critical areas, should be able to pinch that lower sight and hold on to vent control and just get that bomb down. And all they need to do is just use their utility correctly to be able to segment off those angles at Megaton and, and get that bomb down and clear out the site with numbers, but just a little too disjointed once they get into those positions. It's kind of crazy, right? Because Vici, they're up 8 and 5. But it's almost like they could be 13 0 this half. But a couple of rounds, they've just made some really weird, like, boneheaded mistakes. Yep. And you can't really afford that if they're going to go into the grand final against Tyloo. Sure, they might still get over the line against Invictus, and it's looking like they will. Eight rounds on T side of Nuke, even if they lose the next couple, is still a really good half. But that's not going to fly against Tyloo because even some of your best well-prepared plans and rounds are going to go the way of Tyloo. So you need to be having those 10 out of 10 times. And even still, you're not going to win 10 out of 10 of those rounds. I'll tell you what, though, Jordan. I'm having a 10 out of 10 time casting this with you right now. Me too. It's been fantastic. Okay, I'm getting already worried for Vici because this is another one of the rounds where they're getting very close to that door. I just... If, if Vici Gaming didn't run through Squeaky Door for the rest of this half, I would be quite happy, to be honest. Yeah. I just never want to see that again. Well, there's only a couple of rounds left in the half, so you might not... Although, Soaking's definitely thinking about it. Get out of there, mate. Don't even try it. Don't even think about it. He wants to whip that, whip that little Tech-9 out of his pants and fire it straight at Invictus, running through the squeaky door. Yeah. You know it. Unfortunately, it might be a little bit limp the way that Flying's been holding this position down. Vici going to try their luck again. This time on another angle, and Jam Young, he's a little bit too sharp. Working their way through after the smoke goes down for Annex, and well, it's not a bust down into the B bomb site. This time they're committing to A Destroyer, living up to his name, saying that's a great headshot onto Zoking. But the only success for Invictus in this round is Viva alone, and that's a raw adjustment onto Orman. But Vici get the round and set themselves up very nicely for the final one of the half. It's going to be a shocking buy here for Invictus. They'll get three decent guns through, but flying and shout have absolutely nothing to work with. Ah, oh, look, we'll give Vici credit there. That was a much better approach. They didn't rush things too much. A bit of nuance, a little bit of utility, waiting for some CT over-aggression. And they only just, they only go for gold as soon as they get flying out of the equation. Pretty cool pick from Jam Young. Now it's this, uh, janky buy-in from Indictus, but uh, that's where Vici seems to have the most issues half the time. I'm liking their approach, Vici. They're really taking their time, just spamming away, sitting in very safe positions, waiting for over-aggression from the CTs. But actually, Viva's got himself into quite a nice spot here to radio. This is dangerous. Oh. Deagle from Xiao, and he's gotten a double kill. Kaze cops a headshot, Advent a double body shot. And we've spoken about it in the past. The Deagle, very powerful at the moment. Destroy a long range. You can't really capitalize. It goes back to three on three. That was the chance for Invictus. Oh, look at this setup for Invictus, though. In towards that annex. Oi, he's looking for something. We've got a lot of injured players, but Allman. It seems like this man is going to once again read the rotations perfectly, flanking back around through Megaton. So Kink searching for something in secret and Jam Young holding down the flank. They're waiting. They're giving Allman time to try to win this round for Vici, and I think seconds. he's going to be able to find it. They're going to have to move pretty quickly if he does end up getting this frag onto Viva. If this doesn't work <laughs> out, Vici's going to lose the round. He's waited so long. He's now just going to stick by Megaton, but Viva, maybe he's big-brained it as well. 500 IQ on the bomb site. A one-for-one -one trade not good enough at the moment for Invictus because it's going to allow the bomb plant down for Vici and that gives them the chance to win the round. Mm, there's no kit here for Invictus so they need to speed things up flying, moving through Megaton. This 1v1 critical 
for Ulmer to be winning, and he's on a decent angle, but always won that somehow. Jam Young now on 19 HP. We've seen clutches from this position before. He just needs to bide his time, take the one on ones, he's been spotted out, and Oi, he'll finish it. Invictus are going to grab a sixth round to end the half. It was a near thing. Beachy almost getting to double digits, but nonetheless, nine rounds in the half is still not a bad shout, particularly on your T side of Nuke. We'll see whether or not Invictus can turn things around when we come back for the second half. Shine and stay rhyming, stay grinding while y'all stay whining. I'ma stay climbing, keep hitting beats with perfect timing. Build companies, find me a chick, purchase diamonds, go against us. Is it worth trying? Tell me, is it worth dying? I hear mics like iron, Tyson. I'm nice when I take words and slice them, dice them. Put them in a big pot of hot tracks and spice them. Throw some seeds, I don't like them. I think they need coaching like Swim. They get mad because I'm dope with the pen. I feed off them, I'ma keep making hits. Do everything within my power to keep on making them sick every night. This cash play my joints every night. <laughs> Think to themselves, that boy is damn nice. I know I'm Bill Fathers. Check my DNA. I drop jewels like what hangs around the neck of VA. But every day I wake up, plotting on another way to take all the change in this rap game, okay? I'm Bill Fathers. Check my DNA. I drop jewels like what hangs around the neck of VA. But every day I wake up, plotting on another way to take all the change in this rap game, okay? Red, yellow, black, and green blood flows through my veins. The rap game, as you know, is about to go through a change. Lazarus, the name, was born in 1604. Been Centuries. That's why I'm so raw. Sarcastic flow. I still play the game. Hey, it's looking good at the moment for Vici. Up nine and six after their T side, and it's potentially. A scoreline that could have been a little bit better for Vici. We're just talking about that in the halftime break amongst ourselves with Mac. And Pilsky, you said that maybe Vici could have 15 0 that half. I mean, I don't know that that's necessarily true, but definitely could have got a lot more rounds than what they did. I feel like they let a lot of rounds slip by the wayside. Uh, you know, let control of that half get back into Invictus's hands. Then they took it back, but they made things a lot harder for themselves than they needed to. Regardless, so they end up, all things considered, with a good lead at the half. Nine rounds on the T side is nothing to be too upset about. And Jam Young is obviously 
popping off with that USP. Long range, out of outside, tapping away. And Destroyer is still ballsy enough to continue the challenge. I mean, I can kind of understand it if Jam Young's low on HP, but he hasn't even taken a lick of damage. Well, you got to make something happen. Like, after the first two people die, it's like, hmm. Maybe I'll just quit the game. I, I mean, you can either quit the game or you can try and get your team back into it. Either way, they're going to try and throw a bit of an execute towards upper here. It's gone a little better for them. Yeah, Zoki so definitely some problems with that Molly giving away his position. Flying is close by. The Ooh. blocks are going to work at the moment. Viva, he's gotten himself another one. Orman all of a sudden finds himself in a one on two. What has happened there for Vici? He's going to have to creep up the ladder and he might just get some timing here if he slows things down a little bit. Telling you, Jordan, that's another one of those situations where there's just. Too much room given to Invictus. No way that should be turning around so easily. Allman spotted coming up the vent. Now the flash is ready. Two of them for Invictus. Both sides thrown out. Nice tap on the flying. Does put him down to a one shot, but Allman has a bit of work to do. I wonder if there's a DP skip somewhere. Yes, it's not going to matter. That is a crisp pistol round from Viva. Three kills in it. Dude, another one of those rounds. Just the three on five going the way of Invictus should never be allowed to happen. From that situation, Vici should be getting it every day of the week, but some of these awkward, like, janky fights coming out for Vici. Just so strange, man. And now Invictus, again, have been given too much room to work with. They've got that T-side pistol. Oh, Forced up for Vici, though. Yeah, Vici decide to buy in. Not something that we see from them all the time. Scout for cars, eh? Advance got himself an MP9 and a Deagles to follow it up. So King 5-7. You know, the damage that he can do with that is pretty good. Low range angles, and he'll probably be playing around hut. Mm. Already a tag on the Destroyer. Jan Ooh. Young is hanging around as well, but Kaze through the box, a headshot, and that is going to make life even better. Zoking, waiting for the timing to come out of the oh. smoke. Jam Young is coming up with the goods. You talked about his deagle in the pre-show segment. We talked about Vici being able to get it done with a lackluster buy, and this might just be another example of it. It's two on three. Viva and Oi to challenge it, but Orman is on such an off angle. Viva with the raw adjustment keeps it alive for Invictus, but he should never win that fight. Again, it's a three on two. They're throwing it in the bin, Jordan. Oh, Invictus, they're going to go around through secret, man. Jam Young is on walkabout, looking for something up towards that upper side. Advent. He's deep in the side already. Oh, That's yeah, great he is. news. MP9 and armor. Oh, MP9 is going to be more than enough to get rid of Viva, and at this close range, maybe Oi as well. Advent not normally the biggest of fraggers. Jam Young wrapping around the back, though, and they don't know that he's here. Oi walks right into the headshot, but the second doesn't come through. Viva clutches it again for Invictus. Four kills this time. He's up to 21 and 11. What more can he do? This just should not be an 8 and 9 scoreline. Invictus just coming through with the clutch in every single disadvantageous situation. The amount of man advantages that Vici have thrown in the bin this game is ridiculous. And yet they still have the round advantage at the moment. Don't know for how much longer here, Jordan, because they're going to have to take a save here. And then Invictus is going to be getting into that first gun round. Yeah. It kind of... Get a little bit worried then for Vici, don't you? You know, CT side, it can go so, so wrong. We've seen it yesterday even with Invictus against Global. Admittedly, that was on their T side where it went wrong in the second half of Inferno. But it looked like a map that they would just never lose. They won the pistol in the second half. They were doing well. And then things just went wrong. Here's the thing, right? Like, I feel like Zhao Sage and... Uh Viva at the moment are kind of vibing. Yeah. They're really taking a lot of duels and they're winning a lot of them as well. And once you start to see flying warm up a little bit more, that's scary for Vici to be dealing with. You've got a couple of riflers who are just running out all over the place with AKs hitting that crisp one bullet uh, headshots yeah. and taking those aim duels. You, that's the kind of recipe that Tyloo uses up against Vici Gaming all the time and it gets them in so much trouble. Especially when Orman started to go kind of cold a little bit as well here on the CT side. And even toward the end of the first half, he was kind of going cold. Advent's having a bit of a shocker, 5 and 15. Not really getting much on the board. He was something like 0 and 9 in the first half. So he's definitely struggling at the moment. And that was kind of hidden by the fact that Orman was getting so much work done. But now those holes are maybe starting to be a little bit exposed. 
Beachy do have a gun round ahead of them, though. And for They're all like the good that Invictus have done in this second half, it has to continue in the gun round. They're like Advent's like the little brother behind his big brother who's like yeah. getting into the bully a little bit. And then once that big brother's gone, it's just Advent there shaking his fist like, please, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know Dobby was going to creep into this cast as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Invictus, they've built up quite a good amount of money for themselves. Going to hold on to those two MAC-10s as well, so potentially a bit of a faster approach here. Only one head armorless player, and that's going to be Kaze, who on that AWP should be keeping his opponent at, opponents at arm's length, and he will indeed playing from heaven. Looks like Invictus trying to hit a sharp timing in towards this upper bomb site. So Zoking is going to have to be the key player here to lock things down from the door. Now with the back 10 leading his way into the site, but that's a brick wall that they run into. Advent, he's got himself a couple of frags. The bully E has turned into the bully er, and Invictus struggling with that. Yeah, but Fever. He's been cracking open this man disadvantage situations time and time again, biding his time, looking for an overextension from Vici Gaming that he can punish. He's going to try and pounce. Ooh, Zoking, don't move from those boxes. He spotted Advent as well, I think. But Jam Young, the hero, the savior for Vici Gaming, the man that was promised for Chinese Counter Strike. He's done it at least in this round. I don't know if he's lived up to that title just yet for Vici, but. Get him over the line against Invictus, and then one step closer to Tai Lu in the grand final here of DreamHacks. Sum up. That was a bonus for Invictus. Nice little execute. The three mollies towards CT Vent, top of heart, and onto the site, but not good enough flash coverage, and definitely not good enough spacing coming into that upper bomb site to be able to crack it open there. Time, different approach, going towards outside, trying to get those wall of smokes down. Viva gets across without copying even a lick of damage. That's pretty lucky. The rotation in from Ormond. He's got no utility to be able to slow this one down, so he's just going to have to play the headshot angles, and he's having a bit of trouble here. Doesn't connect the first shot, scrambling onto the site now. And it's pretty wise for him to back away, though. Too often we see the re-peak, and they just get demolished for it. Now he's got a second chance to play the crossfire with Jam Young. No rotation coming in just yet from Zoking or really anyone else from up on that A-bomb site. It's a two-man defense for Vici, but all of Invictus are wrapping around this bomb site, and this does not look too fun, unless some aim jewels go the way of Jam Young. He's got a one-for-one. One. Now it's on Dwarven. and they nearly line up for him. He's done a bit of damage to Destroyer, but decent enough for Vici. Two kills on the defense, Whoa. and Kaze catches flying, who's just wandering around on the bomb site. That was a soft death, and it gives Vici the numbers advantage for the retake. They're going to start to all come in from Megaton here. See if they can crack this vertical crossfire between Destroy Destroyer and Oi. Nice spot to play from. Definitely difficult to trade, particularly for the AWP of Kaze. Advent has managed to grab Oi and Kaze. He's definitely having some difficulty getting rid of Destroyer, oh. who hits the head. That's four kills for Destroyer. Invictus have won another round off the back of a big individual play. That's massive for Destroyer. The man was having a bit of a shocker. I think he was about 2-12 and 12 a little bit ago. But uh, as Invictus is starting to get rolling on this T side, the man's starting to find a few frags right when he's needing to step up. He's keeping Invictus in the game, but that comes down to a one-on-one. -on -one. That's expensive for both sides. And Invici, they're going to try and crack this window open. They've only got the two MP9s, pretty limited on the utility, but Kaze's got access to that AWP, so he needs to make some inroads here. Almond's got himself an M4A1S finally as well. He's been, I think, getting drops. Most of this half. And he definitely looks a lot more comfortable with the A1S than he does with the A4, in my opinion. Mm. Invictus, they're trying to get a breed on what Vici's got. Just taking their time, sitting around in lobby. Could come back to bite them, though. There's not a whole lot of utility here for Vici to really lock them out of the bomb sites. And you're going to see that HE even expended as we speak. So. Oh, this could be a really good opener here for Kaze. And the double MP9 set up in Hunt. I think this might be a recipe for success here for Vici. And there it is for Kaze. He drops the molly as well. Yeah, 
Repeaks and gets flying too. Go get you one more, Kaze. Hey? Let's see it. Oh. You know he wants it. <laughs> but actually, maybe wiser to just slow things down a little bit here. Jam Young spots the info that they're coming in through radio. He's going to decide to back down into the B bomb site. I like this from Vici. Zoking has dropped in the meanwhile, perhaps getting a little bit over eager to push into lobby. I'm not sure the circumstances, but now again, a numbers advantage starts to slip away. Orman tries to salvage, but he can only get one. A messy spray onto Siasaga makes it difficult to follow up on the Oi, and it's on to Kaze. A great round from him, three kills. But Viva in the one-on-one -on -one against Advent, and Advent only has an MP9. He's watching the angle. It has to be a fake plant there. Surely Advent's aware of that. He's going to jump out of control room, trying to get aggressive. Viva, headshot, not required anymore. Ow. And Advent can't even get any damage onto Viva. They've done it again. Invictus getting over the line time and time again in these clutch situations. And Vici are just crumbling. How many man disadvantage situations have they won this game? This is ridiculous. <sighs> Bloody hell, man. Vici Gaming is just falling apart here on Nuke. They're creating so many advantages and they're just... There's literally no other word for it, Jordan. They are literally pissing them away. Yeah. Oh, the money's broke now. Gonna have to take a single save. But tack timeout for Invictus. That's a bit of a calm down pause after yet another massive clutch. And Viva, he's having one of those games, Jordan. It's been a little while, but yeah. we definitely know he's capable of this kind of performance. Yep. Well, Vici, I don't really know that I want to say they're reliable in high-pressure situations. I think this is where you start to see the cracks really showing for this Chinese squad. Four smokes. Five sevens and deagles invested. A little bit of armor here as well. Vici might need a miracle to get through this round, but to be honest, seems like on the CT side of Nuke, they might actually need a miracle to win this map. Maybe this round can be that miracle. He's close with a 5-7. He had a chance. He got some good damage down. Kaze will finish one off with a headshot, but there needs to be a few more kills here for Vici, and Kaze is overwhelmed. Jam Young tries to help him out. That's really nice from Invictus. Great round. 12 and 10. They have the advantage, and now they can start thinking about winning the map. Well, this is where Vici needs to dig deep. They need to recognize, uh, like, where are the tack pauses from Vici? They need to recognize, really, that they're, they're creating a lot of advantageous situations. It's the executes when they're up and they've got control. The execution is just off from them. Bit of a difference this time for Vici. Double orb Jam Young. That ramp player is going to get himself that AWP. Bam, coming away from Allman. Seemed like it would be dead on, but not connecting there. Double orb. Vici have just decided to change things up. I mean, clearly what they're doing on the CT side right now isn't working, but this kind of screams a bit of a panic buy to me. I don't really think that Vici likes to go to the double orb, otherwise we'd see it a lot more than we do. Oh, the Annex split is coming in here though, Jordan. Advent and Zoking have got their work cut out for them. Invictus looking to hit a really nice timing. That's a good rotation in from Kaze. He's going to rotate straight up in towards Heaven. Nicely timed utility here as well. The nade probably won't do too much damage, but the orb certainly will. Kaze gets the opener. Advent does well to grab one as well. That's four on two. Surely they can't drop this one. Vici, they've got another one. They've got another four on two advantage. And Victor, slow it down. Beaver and Destroyer know how susceptible Vici have been before. And you don't want to be that guy that gives the frag to Invictus. Jam Young certainly won't be this time. Viva. It's crazy how much Vici are moving in this four on two. They're running around like crazy. Yeah. Zoking went up and down the vent. Now he's back on top of Heart. Advent moved off the site. CT vent back again. Both of the Orphans running around through elbow outside. It's just crazy how panicked they look in this advantageous situation. And there's a hole. At the end of all that, there's a massive hole. It is traded by Zoking, but it's just insane. Yeah. It's almost like Vici, when it's five on five, they are calm, they are zen, yep. and they just get themselves into a good position, and that's where the panic ensues. It's insane.
Struggle Street indeed for Vici, and they're not out of the woods yet. In fact, they're probably not even halfway through them. Got to get past this round. Then they have to get through another couple to salvage the economy. If they get up to something like 14-12, that's where I'll start to feel like Vici are probably back in the driver's seat. But it's another pistol buy for Invictus, and these have been deadly. Vici mm. have really been dropping too many rounds against the force buyers, the Ecos of Invictus. I have to say, though, Zoking and Advent have been pretty solid on this upper side, and it's going to be them to lock this down yet again. They've still got some utility to drop. One of the smokes goes on door. Does that slow Invictus down here, or do they push straight through the door smoke? Advent's still got a smoke to be dropping as well. Zoking's just going to play a little bit further back. He's not up on the hut anymore. Double stack on default. Uh... to try and cancel any rafters player, but there's no one there right now for Vici. Advent's doing work from the bomb site. He's able to farm up a storm before eventually being overrun by the Tech 9 of Destroyer, but 12 apiece. Good response from Advent. Just drops that smoke down on Hut. Off angle for Zoe King. It's a good setup to get Vici through a bit of a scary round. Invictus trying to go for that full half buy. Make the pistols work. All right, time for Invictus Viva. Gone down to a to a Tech Nine to get full utility when he could have afforded AK armor. That's very interesting. Honestly, if I was anyone on the team, I think I'm throwing the AK to Viva yeah, at this point I don't, as well. I maybe he's expecting to follow up the rest of his team. Someone dies with an AK, he can pick it up. Yeah. But why would you just not buy an AK, man? In, in a round like this. Either way, Invictus straight down secret. Almond's there, but he's got very little delaying utility. Oh that my god! That is a massive shot. Or he just plucks him straight out of the air. He only had an MP9. A Jam Young now trying to scramble into position, trying to find an opening here from Megaton. He's not being given any opportunities by the T's, and he just gets mollied off, Jordan. And Kaze's there as well. It's the double orb setup. This is quite potent, but if Destroyer's able to creep forward, this will be where Kaze just gets out positioned. Maybe aware of the timing, hasn't been spotted until Destroyer just takes his head off. This round's fallen apart. Vici might even have to consider saving here. A five on three retake with the economy the way that it is for Vici. I don't know about that. They've actually opted to go for that AWP and I think that really signifies their intention. Zoking, picking the AWP up and Vici are out of here. Jam Young has gotten a kill on the Destroyer but it's not changing any minds. The push and the pull continues. Invictus Get themselves ahead again. How have we ended up here, man? Like, from where Vici were in this first half, it's just unbelievable that they're potentially starting to lose this game. All the pressure on the shoulders of Vici. They're the team that's supposed to win this matchup. They won map one so cleanly. And the first half was pretty sublime. Apart from a few issues. But this second half has just been leaving a little bit to be desired. Might be a nice way to put it. Credit to Invictus, though. Like, they clearly look like they knew how to work their way through a T side of Nuke. And they're playing off of each other quite well in these small man situations. They're definitely punishing Vici for their mistakes. They've got some good executes. They definitely know how to run those wall of smokes. They're not rushing things when they get the site or uh, control of lower, like in towards Decon and Windows. They've got some quicker upper executes. Oh, it's a change up from Invictus, and that's been punished. Great work from Advent. Good awareness. Thought the Destroyer was going to get down the vent for free, and that could have been disastrous for Vici. That could have just been round over if he makes it down. But contextually, that's a good pick for Vici. They get that man advantage on one of these awkward rounds where if they lose things, their money gets a little bit dicey. That's exactly the kind of advantage that they need. But uh, the question is, what do they do now that they've gotten it? Well, how many 4VX rounds has Vici actually lost? Hmm. Their conversion rate has not been good. Normally, you're looking for something like 75 to 80% of the rounds. You get the initial pick to turn it into a win. And I'd say right now, for Vici, it's been like 50%, maybe even less. Lying, sitting in the smoke. Foreman re-drops the smoke on top of him and he pushes forward, but segmented off from his team. Zoking's starting to clean up, but does get traded out. 
Point takes a fair chunk of damage there, and Orman is in the perfect position to come up behind these remaining players. Kaze makes life so easy for Orman there. There's no chance for anyone to turn around and watch when they're getting shot from the front. Good crossfire for Vici, good patience from Orman. And Vici equalized once again. Back to 13-13. This time, money's looking awkward for Invictus. So it's probably back to the pistol buy for them. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good approach here. They've looked competitive in a couple of these rounds where they go for pistol armor. They're going to go for a bit of attack timeout. But Vici, winning that round is absolutely massive for them. They punish the, tri the attempted vent drop. And then they close that round out with four alive. That's fantastic for their economy at a critical point in the game. 13 and 13 apiece. We're getting towards the tail end of this CT half. The tail end of the game, and that is where you need that strong economy on the CT side. You cannot afford to be grinding these rounds out with only one or two alive. And Invictus now going for this half buy. Just to further that point even more, Vici would be wise to clean this up with very, very minimal losses, but nothing's guaranteed. So many sharp pistoling players in China, and many, many of them on Invictus. Fast to play into ramp. Ham Young is committing to the fight, but he does have the backup right now of Orman. So if Invictus really just rush in here, they're going to be walking into a massive crossfire. Smoke's going to go down. Ham Young boosting himself up over it, changing his positioning. Orman is collapsed on by multiple. The flash goes through, flying, does cop that right in the face. That's going to slow things down. Kaze does miss a critical shot, and Jam Young is just absolutely going to be punished. I can't believe what I'm seeing, Vici. Surely not. Surely not another round. Zoking stabilizes, but now he is going to be run down. Tech nines, they do not stop. It's really a hype train that doesn't stop rolling at all. Advent has a lot of work no. to do here, and it, true to Advent's form, is not going to go too kindly. Kaze with a P250 crucially gets the kill on a destroyer who was the high HP player. That could have been a one-and-done position. Now he has an AK. This is a winnable round, but it's a must-win round for Vici. Flying, does get the bomb plant down. Kaze doesn't quite roll around the corner yet. He slowed things down. And Flying in the one-on-one -on -one could put Invictus into a map-winning position. Kaze is definitely taking his time here. No defuse kit available for him, and he's running around with a pistol out. Surely has to be aware of Flying's oh. position, but the headshot, and again, a 4K from an individual on Invictus. Gets them through the round when Vici really couldn't afford a loss like that. 14-13 Invictus. Vici, luckily, a strong enough economy after four alive in the previous round, but that should never have happened in a million years. So many players out of position up against the half by for Vici. Cam Young just seemed like he was in two minds. He wanted to take the fight, but he wanted to back away. If he would have just booked it straight into control room, he'd have been fine. He'd have been able to play the angle, but he gets stuck outside the double doors and he doesn't get through them in time. Two players come through the smoke and he's toast. And now Vici, they're back to square one. Ooh. Good tags, but not enough to get the kill onto Viva. Vici are rotating quickly down into the lower bomb site. Ooh. Great utility usage here from Jam Young. It's almost enough to kill Vici, to kill Viva even. And now he has that crucial info. He dives back into the bomb site. It's all coming up perfectly for Vici in this round, but they still need to convert it. Jam Young's on his own. He's under pressure right now. Flying, probing, so is Destroyer. He's in all sorts of problems. Where is the rest of Vici? enough rotations they're just gonna have to take a save here on match point they've got no control there's too much pressure on jam young's shoulders there needs to be a rotation down there to help him he's trying to hold every angle by himself and invictus another round where they just take decon and windows and once you got decon and windows half the time the rest is a formality and you're seeing invictus do what Vici struggled to do on their T-side when Flying was in that position that Jam Young was sitting in. I really don't know what I'm seeing at the moment, Pilski. Such a good start. Look at all of that damage onto Invictus. Viva, 2 HP. What a difference that could have made if that nade would have killed Viva. Got to give credit to Invictus, though. They're playing a pretty good game here. This T-side has been pretty solid. And they've been punishing Vici for their mistakes. XM comes out for Advent in a round like this. Oh, he had that last round. Did he? Yeah. Okay. Yep. 
Well, nonetheless, this one even higher stakes because it is map point for Invictus. And Vici have really dropped the ball here on Nuke. Undoubtedly. Perfect buy for Invictus. Now you think about all those rounds in the first half where we thought, well, it probably doesn't matter too much. Vici's still getting a good first half here. Oh, man, but I was making a big deal out of it for starts a Starts to turn itself on its head. And now you think three or four extra rounds on that, that first half, which is realistically possible from what we saw. And Vici would have already won this map. Game would have been over. They should have already won this map. It really should have happened. Well, have to be a banger couple of rounds here for Vici. Bring it back to overtime. Credit to Invictus, though. A roster full of individuals that have so much talent and can read these situations so well intuitively yep. and clutch so often. And that has been yet another great asset to Invictus in this very, very tough match of Nuke. Jam Young is going to try something a little bit tricky here. Pushes up, waits behind the smoke. He's on his own, Pilski. There is no one here to help him at all. No flashes are going to come. And if Invictus walks through this smoke, unless he gets two, Jam Young hasn't made the right call. Fading favorably, oh! Jam Young. Oh, well, that's not just one. It's not just two, but all four. And Vici, they've been given a lifeline back into this map. Balls of steel for Jam Young. Holds his nerve, and he is going to wipe the floor with the entirety of Invictus Gaming. Orban finishes off. Oi. But at the end of the day, Jordan, look, I'm not going to take anything away from that massive play, but that does not give me confidence that BG no. Gaming can win this map. Where they've been falling apart is the XVX situations, the mid round. That's a fantastic spray down. That is massive. But that is not something you can consistently rely on. Well, it's about time someone on Vici has had a big play because that's been what's getting Invictus through all of these rounds. Vici, finally, it's their turn. 14-15. One more round for Vici here. Gets them into overtime. One for Invictus. Gets them a map victory. And oh. At least this time, Vici have a good buy. When was the last time you saw a spray down like that? Actually was a Against a full ago. eco. Uh, sorry, against a full, full buy. buy. Full yeah. buy, yeah. Nuts. I don't remember it. Oh. Kaze spots some info. Doesn't want to be picking his head up any more than that, though, because all of Invictus are looking in his direction. But at least he has the info. That's critical for these uppers players who are going to be ready for this annex split now. But Zokin getting mollied out of position. At least he's going to get one. Orman helps out as well. Advent's position, as of yet, hasn't been given away. This is potentially looking like overtime, oh. but flying. He gets the opener onto the site. That'll be traded back down. Orman's doing a great job in this round. It's a double kill for him. Viva has to collect the bomb, but Viva in a one on three, and I would not count him out right now for Invictus. So many times he's been able to get them over the line in rounds like this. I'm trying to find the bomb stomping around, does eventually pick it up. Goes for the real plant, and he's been given room to do so by Vici. Allman wrapping around towards that vent area. The double retake, that's going to be overtime for Vici. Nicely done. Should never have got to this point, okay? But uh, at some point, you got to start turning things around, got to start making up for some of the mistakes of the past. And Vici, they're doing their best here. Well, economic woes will not be a concern now that we're into overtime for Vici. I wonder if they go back to the double up. It looks like Jam Young has already got himself an M4, so you'd have to think that this is just going to be the he's single looked, orb. He's looked uncomfortable with this secondary orb. I'd much I, rather I see him stick with the M4. He's had a, a couple of okay rounds, but by and large, he's a rifler. You know, yeah. he's not an orb. Yeah. Totally agree, Jordan. Totally agree. Wow. Push towards the outside, actually. The hard read from Beachy. This oh is what we're God. used to seeing from Zoking. Fantastic. He gets two for himself. I don't even know how he gets the second frag there. It must have been some good flashes coming through for Vici. Otherwise, surely he gets traded down. But this is a bit more like it for Vici. Starting off oh. on the right terms. Kaze deletes Destroyer. And you're starting to feel like Vici now is coming back into their own on the CT side of overtime. Oh. Flying's even been spotted. Orman should never get that kill that easily. Hello. That's a huge round to start things off for Vici. Nicely done.
They're starting to warm up. They're starting to fire up a little bit. Those are the kind of rounds that after you're second guessing yourself, that's when, you know, the 4K spray down from Jam Young just charging straight through outside. That's when you're starting to get assertive and you're going, yeah, you know what? We're better. Yep. We're going to get in their face. And that's when all of those doubts start to go in towards the back of your mind. But that's where Invictus, they need to try to keep their cool. They need to get some of these picks and make Vici second guess themselves. That's one of the picks you're talking about. And I'm keen to see if Vici continuing this bravado, continue trying to get in their face. And Kaze, he's doing just that. He's going to even up the man disadvantage. And he's not done yet. He sneaks back onto the angle. He's going to found Valsage as well. Kaze really rising up now in the overtime. He was a little bit slow on the CT side for Vici. Look at Zoking. Cheeky man. Actually, Orman's the one who finds the pick. Well, I think Vici have just sort of come into this overtime with the mentality that, hey, we are the better team. Let's try and throw some curveballs at Invictus. Let's not be that <sighs> passive team. Let's not let Invictus dictate how these rounds play out. I think they've cracked. Is basically what's happened. They're yeah. just over it. They're they like, this, said, game, this game should have been won ages ago. Let's just get it done, boys. Troya, going to get Kaze. But with Vici very firmly set up around the bomb. Don't think you should be getting back into this round. Not on 60 HP. Doesn't uh, matter too much with the economy either. 16 KOT. You've got to get a good buy here for Vici, regardless of losing guns. So, not too much for Destroyer left to do, but... That friend does drop. Now, he was low HP. Yeah, he's basically just a scout at that point. Smoke goes down in front of door. <laughs> he's got to push through a oh. smoke uh, into two players. That doesn't make life too much easier either. They're both going to hear that drop, and they'll turn around. Orman, he spotted him. So King. A couple of one-on-ones, uh, <laughs> but hey, it's okay. They get over the line in the Ooh. end. Vici are up to 17, and Invictus, precipice of... A perfect half here for Vici. Will not be too keen on seeing that going through to the second half of OT. That, I feel like that 4K spray down from Jam Young has kind of put Invictus back in their shell a little bit after some big plays. Kind of put pause for thought in their mind. They're definitely playing a little bit slower, it seems. But to be fair, Vici has been getting in their face quite a bit as well. Wall of smoke across the outside here. One of them's been displaced by the Molotov, so that's fantastic for Vici. They've got info on who has crossed the secret, and with a lot of smokes being invested there by Invictus, that's going to be great info for Vici. Invictus getting ready to go for this upper hit. Zao Sage trying to sneak around through the backside of Annex, trying to find the right timing, and it's going to be on Advent and Zoking to lock down this push once again. Woman still watching the push into Annex. See what Advent and Zoking can for the moment, Zoking just fully flashed. Oi checks the rafter, but he hasn't checked. Hart Kaze has gotten himself one. Zoking and Advent double stacked. Zoking's gotten one. They're not expecting Advent from the same spot. He's got two. Unbelievable. And Oi finds a one on three. Surely not possible. Kaze posted on the line with the orb. He's not going to miss a shot like that. 18 to 15. Perfect half for Vici. And now, again, it's their map to lose. Rock solid CT side there for Vici Gaming. Exactly what you want to be seeing. And now, moving on to you, what you would argue is probably their strongest side of the map anyway. You should be expecting them to just just tap it in the goal. It's right there. You just need that one round. They just need to fall over and hit the ball, and it'll roll in. It's like breeze of wind. Three match points for Vici. Admittedly, Victus had two. They weren't able to get over the line. But this is a different looking Vici now in overtime. Actually, the Molotov again displaces the wall of smoke. Leaves a gigantic gap here that Vici is going to have to do something about. And I don't think they have an additional smoke to be underarming. They're going to flash and just get across, but that's been spotted by Invictus. At least they know only one player across the secret oh, for the time being. I'm going to change up the plan here for Vici. It might no longer be a play to the B-bomb site. Xiao is going to have to deal with more than one. That's pretty nice adaptation oh. on the fly. And Chris Spain from Jam Young taking the head of flying right off. Kaze follows up the second man into the bomb site, And it's the Smash Bros for Vici as they just 
delete Invictus from the map. Destroyer's on his own, one on three, more lead off. That's the map, Beachy of one, two and zero. What a banger of a nuke. Absolutely, they've made their way into the grand final. That's fantastic for them.